Here is a Basque-inspired pepper dish that will completely change how you think about peppers and onions. This is not a condiment for your hot dog. This is a dish with a texture so silky and the flavor so intense that it should be a thing. If there was a swanky tapas bar in your city, this could be their signature dish. I mean, people would line up on the street just for these peppers. It all started with several viewers asking me for a piperad recipe, which is a Basque dish that has peppers, onions, and garlic. I've been to the Basque country several times, but unfortunately, I never pay attention to what the dishes are called. I pay attention to what they taste like. I remember having some gloriously silky peppers and caramelized onions, so I started playing with these ingredients until I got this incredible concoction. As I was editing this video, I googled for piperat to check how to spell it and couldn't help noticing that my piperat looks very different from what the internet considers this dish to be. So if it makes you feel any better to call it Helen's Silky Peppers, that's cool. But I do hope you make it because it's one of the most sensual textures a vegetable dish could have. Our first order of business is to burn some peppers. Red, orange, yellow peppers all work. As it turns out, green peppers would be more authentic, but personally, I don't like them. <laughs> Cut the flesh of the peppers and discard the seeds. Preheat the grill with all burners on high for 15 minutes. Place your peppers on the grill, skin side down. No need to oil anything. And now, burn the heck out of them. How long it will take depends on your grill, but roughly 10 to 15 minutes. We are only cooking the skin side, but we need it to turn very black or the peppers will be hard to peel. Keep in mind that your peppers won't all be done at the same time, so keep an eye on them and remove them as they are done. If some really bumpy ones don't get to the totally black stage, that's okay. If you don't have a grill, you can also burn your peppers by placing them skin side up under the broiler. As soon as your peppers are done, put them in a bowl and cover with plastic wrap or a lid while they cool. The steaming step will make them easier to peel. I know some people fire roast the peppers whole and then remove the seeds, but that's annoying for so many reasons. Round things like whole peppers take way longer to brown and require way more rotating than flat things like pepper sides. And cooking the peppers whole means that the seeds will get all over the flesh and getting them off will be a lot of work. So now you know that there is a method to my madness. <laughs> While our peppers is cool, let's prep the onions. The ratio of ingredients is completely flexible in this dish, but I like to use one medium onion for every two peppers. We've caramelized onions many times on my channel, but just to review, the type of onion matters. You need yellow onions that are sometimes sold as Spanish onions. The direction of slicing matters too. You need to slice them pole to pole, not into half circles. And I like to add some garlic to this dish too. About one clove per pepper. You can thinly slice it with a knife or put it through a garlic press. Put three tablespoons of olive oil into a 10 inch stainless steel skillet and set it over moderately high heat. Yes, even the pan matters. Stainless steel works best. You get the brown bits on the bottom of the pan and an even heat distribution. Enamel coated cast iron works okay. You'll get the brown bits, but less even heat distribution. Seasoned cast iron can be damaged by multiple deglazings and acidic ingredients and Teflon won't give you any brown bits. When the oil starts to shimmer, add the onions, a generous pinch of salt, and give it all a stir. Then leave the onions alone until the bottom ones start to brown. This will take around five minutes, but you really need to watch them. Every once in a while, pick up a few onions from the bottom, and when they look like this, give it all a stir. Now we'll repeat this procedure four to five times. Let them sit undisturbed, store thoroughly, and let them sit again. 
If they are turning too dark, you are either not stirring often enough or you don't have enough oil in the pan or your heat is too high. So make all the necessary adjustments to get them nicely browned. After the initial stir, I start to gradually bring the heat down. Even browning is not the goal here. That would be impossible at this stage. It's normal for some onions to look raw while others are very brown. Now that we've built up some color, let's add the garlic, a pinch of salt, and turn down the heat to fairly low. We want to get down to a very gentle sizzle so that the garlic can start softening without burning. While that's happening, let's peel the peppers. See how easily the skin comes off? Make sure you remove all the burnt pieces of the skin because they taste really bad. Line up the peppers on your cutting board and slice them lengthwise into strips. Go slow. They're very slippery and you don't want to cut yourself. Let's get all the peppers back into the bowl and add them to our onions. Add some salt and give it all a stir. Now we want everything to simmer together very gently until all the flavors blend and the textures become jammy. This will take about 20 minutes. Every five minutes or so, add one or two tablespoons of water and let it dissolve the brown bits stuck to the pan. Stir everything up and leave it alone again. We'll repeat this deglazing step another couple of times and then wait for all the water to evaporate and for the veggies to start sizzling slightly in oil. We are done. Let's take it off the heat and season. This means salt and acidity. You can use pomegranate molasses or balsamic vinegar. Since everything here is already so sweet, I'll go with a more acidic option, which is the vinegar. Just a splash. Don't overdo it. Give it all a stir and play with salt and acidity until you get it right. Let it rest for at least 10 minutes and serve. It can be served hot or cold or rewarmed and will last in the fridge for a week. I know that whenever people see peppers and onions, they think of some sort of sausage, but I think that would be a mistake. This dish is so intense and texturally interesting that you want something more delicate to serve with it. It makes an incredible appetizer spread on bread and a really stunning accompaniment to any mild white fish like cod or halibut. I often get the question of how do you dress up a sous vide fish that has a fabulous texture but no browning? This is how. Serve it on top of this onion pepper jam. You could also top these peppers with poached eggs for a really spectacular brunch. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.